So a couple of things that I wanted to show you. So one of the things that you can do in the water almost as fast as you can in the air is work on karate chops. When I was a kid, I liked karate chops, so we did karate chops here. So I show people this. This is the start of um, propulsion and power. We're starting to tell them that. So karate chops in the water, you go really fast. If you turn your hands like this, you do the same thing. Oh my gosh, it's such a huge difference. You have to use your abs, you have to use your back. There's a lot more to it. If you open your hands, fingers wide, and do the same thing, and then close your hands, and then open your hands again, what they'll find, and get them to play, what they'll find is with the hands together is the strongest, the hardest for them to do in the water, but it's the strongest they'll be in the water. This is the power hands. You tell them this is where your power comes from when you're swimming. No matter what we're doing, your power comes from here. Sometimes you want the power, with your hands like this. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want to use it like this. So let me give you an example. So let's do something practical. We're still talking about the difference between water and air, right? So I put my hand out here and I'll say, up here, if you swing as hard as you can, what happens to your body in the water, in the air, in the air? It's turning you that way, right? This is what's happening in the air. And so if I were to grab a post and grab a ladder or something like that and pull and push really hard up on the air, I would go that way because this pole's not going to move. What happens when you put your hand in the water? The same thing. Up here, you got nothing. Down here, you go this way. So if you want to move somewhere, you take that strong part of your hand, that power part of your hand, and you push in the water and you're always going to go the opposite direction you push. So if you push this way and then you just push your hand right back, you're just going to go back and forth. And it's not a particularly useful, it can be fun, but it's not useful. So if you want to use it in a different way, you take your hand, you do your turn, then you pull it out and you do your karate chop that we just talked about, and come right back, and look at that, you don't move. Now if you want to go again, you push again, and you karate chop, and you push again, and you karate chop, and you push again. Now we made a circle, now we're doing something with our hands to help us propel and move, we're controlling ourselves in the water, we're giving, the water the, we're giving ourselves the ability to control the water. That's what they're excited about. That's what they're going to be good about. So we spend time with both hands going around in circles. And then if they're comfortable with it, then I'll get them to drop down low and say, do the same thing here and notice if it's easier or harder. And it's going to be easier. Just That's the answer, right? Because there's less of them here, so they're going to be floating. And we've spun. We've done good. And I'm going to say next piece is, OK, good. So let's talk about how else to use your hands. So if you take your hands here and you push down hard, okay, then it's going to help unweight you, right? And so I say, let's walk up and down. And so we're going to scoot and I'm going to scoot back, and apologies for the camera, but I need to be taller here. We'll scoot back to here and as far as we can and push down and you're going to push yourself up and I'm going to get them to walk up and down. I do this too, by the way, if they're really cold because if they're really cold, this helps them work. And just get them used to pushing up and down, and they're going to be like, wow, I'm really going up and down. You'll see that they start trying to bounce with their legs and say, you don't need your legs in this. All you need is your hands. Once they get that slightly comfortable, do just the opposite. So you pull your hands up. So from your thighs, you pull your hands up. Nothing's going to happen, but you're going to say, feel the pressure on your feet as you do that. That's going to work. If that works good, Get them to take their hands behind their back and pull backwards and hop themselves down the leg. So those of you who are thinking realize that this push right here is the same push that we're going to use when we're on our float and we're going to come back up for recovery. This pull back here is the exact same move we're going to use when we're on our backs and we're going to, sorry, this one's, yeah, I said that right. And this one's going to help us recover from the back row. We're just getting them started with it. If they like that, if it works okay, then I'm going to look to see if they're scared when they fall, move forward. Some would say, so let's see how far you can jump. We're going to lean forward until you're comfortable. As soon as you get scared, don't stop leaning forward. Step. But see how far you can lean forward and then push down and pull your feet forward. So we're just hopping and we're seeing who can do the biggest hop. You'll find you lose a lot of people at this point in time because they get scared about that lean. Just slow down, say, go as slow as you want to, go back to play with hands, go back to hopping, just keep that process going. So we talked about 
and how the strength of the propulsion in swim is right here. And so there's some things that we can do to practice it. It also helps you with a little more balance coming off of the walk and a sense of how your propulsion can change your balance, how you can control things. So Rosie's gonna help me show you this one and we will come on in here, madam. Thank you very much, I appreciate it again. Thank you. Um, so we're going to uh, just take our hands here and we're just gonna push down. It's just gonna be a straight down. And if you push down real slowly, you'll notice that nothing happens, right? It just yes. kind of sits there. But if you push hard, it doesn't necessarily pull you off the ground, but it, you'll feel it unweight you a little bit. And if you pushed really, really hard, you might be able to get off the ground in this shallow water. But as we go deeper, it gets easier to unweight. So we're gonna go deeper. So let's go this way. We're going deeper. And, and so what I want you to do is just push down hard and just kinda hop, just a little hop. Because this is what your hands are gonna do as you move through the water. It's just the way, do you feel the pressure of yes. your hands pushing up? Okay, that's what we're going for. That's it. And I'll spin around this way, we'll just hop back. And these are real hops, so if you're, um, if you're doing this on your own, or if you've got somebody who when they start to hop forward, it really makes them uncomfortable, have them do it real slowly, and just get them used to even staying in the place, staying in the same place, just pushing down and feeling the propulsion. But if you've got somebody who's comfortable, like Rosie, just hop, and that works out really good. Now we got that hop, and that's easy, because Rosie's an old hand at this one. She's done this <laughs> one before. So we're gonna do just a larger hop this time. So lean forward a tiny bit, and then do the same push down and pull your feet forward. So same push down, pull your feet forward. Some people will be really comfortable with this, and they'll be able to do big, big hops. Other people, as soon as they start leaning forward or backwards, it really scares them. Watch them just adapt and go from there. All right, Rosie, shall we? A little bigger, let's do a big hop. Okay. Big hop, long one. There you go. This is the start of flow. And you'll see the people at this point in time, you'll see people who, are ju who just can't lean forward or they just can't pull their feet up. They're hanging on to the bottom. They're not ready for that. Tell them to slow down, barely move, barely do it, real small hops, however that needs to happen. You just want them to be comfortable. After you get that through, they're good. You can have hop contests to see how long you can hop. After that kind of stuff, you're, you're in good shape and you're ready to move. If you want to try back hops, so we've done back hops once or twice before, so we'll try. So if you put your hands behind you with your palms facing the front, you're gonna pull forward and you're going to hop backwards. And you're just, it's the same propulsion, it's just moving you a different direction. This is really awkward for most people. It's yes. kind of hard initially. It is for coaches, this is the same thing we're gonna use exactly the same thing when they're doing recovery from a back club. Okay, so that's where we're going. So we let them play and we'll come back here and hop just a little more. There you go. And some of these are smoother and some of these are not. This is actually the hardest one of all of them. Um, but you see, it's beginning propulsion. Do it as gently as you need to. If people can move through this really fast, move through it fast. Um, but they're just getting a feel of balance and how their hands in the water affect that balance. Some people like it, some people don't. Adjust to your customer. 